Hey there! Today, I'll be showing you some tips for completing the Monarch's Journey challenges for Constantinos Angelos. Usual rules apply, this guide is using only the DLC that has been made free for the game at one point or another, namely the Old Gods, Sword of Islam, and Sons of Abraham. However, none of these three are required for this challenge, and you should be able to follow this guide if you're missing any of these, or don't have any of them at all, or have all of them and more, or whatever. Sword of Islam and Sons of Abraham aren't available for free anymore, but you can get the Old Gods for free just by following the link in this video's description and signing up for the CK3 email newsletter. It takes like two seconds and unlocks a whole bunch of options for your game if you don't already own Old Gods, so I highly recommend it. Anyways, here's my rule set. My list of purely cosmetic mods that don't interfere with unlocking these challenges is also in the description. Let's get started. Here are the three challenges for today. The first is moving up. Have multiple kingdom titles under the control of your dynasty at the same time. Two for bronze, three for silver, and four for gold. This can be completed for as long as you're playing the Angelos dynasty. Second is Lovely Rule. Achieve a high game score. Game score is the accumulation of prestige and piety that each of your characters had at the time of their death. The dead characters' prestige and piety both get added to your game score when you switch to playing as their heir. You need 5,000 points for bronze, 10,000 for silver, and 15,000 for gold, and this can be completed as long as you're playing the Angelos Dynasty. Finally, con once, con twice. Have as many of your own children alive at the same time as possible. Three for bronze, seven for silver, and ten for gold. This can only be completed while playing as our original ruler, Constantinos. What is it with Christian Monarch's Journey rulers and having challenges related to fathering a bunch of kids? Anyway, Constantinos is in a good position to complete the Con Once challenge. He's young, lustful, and a fortune builder, which means his fertility is really high right off the bat. He's also attractive and groomed, which greatly increases his opinion with heterosexual women. Still, ten kids all alive at the same time is a tall order, so you'll almost certainly need to rely on some infidelity to pull this one off. Just like Conan's Five Son Challenge, this is a lot easier with Way of Life since you can target seduce young women, but without that DLC, the most reliable way to have a lot of kids, on top of having a young wife with fertility enhancing traits, is to invite debutantes through the intrigue menu, because they are five times more likely than equivalent female courtiers to have a special event to make them your lover. Seducing single ladies is much better for this challenge than sleeping with married ones, both for avoiding making enemies with jealous husbands, and because if your pregnant mistress is single, as the real father of the baby, you're the one in charge of whether the child is considered legitimized, acknowledged as a bastard, or denounced. I recommend acknowledging them. The kids need to be of your dynasty to count towards the challenge, which they will be if you acknowledge them as bastards, and by not legitimizing them, you're minimizing the opinion penalty that your wife and legitimate kids will have against you. Get as many lovers as possible and let your baby making happen in the background while you deal with the other challenges. Lovely Rule isn't really something you need to consciously strive for, since it's just an accumulation of the prestige and piety of the various characters you play as, so after a few generations of good long-lived rulers, you'll hit the 15k benchmark without really trying. Moving up is probably the trickiest challenge of this journey. Members of your dynasty have to be holding four king tier titles at the same time. One member holding multiple kingdoms does count, so two double kings, a king and a triple king, or a single character holding four or more kingdom titles all work to complete the gold challenge. The Byzantine Empire, which Constantinos starts as a duke vassal to, is actually an amazing place for this challenge because despite its massive size, there are no kingdom titles already created at the challenge's start date. By far the easiest way to complete moving up is to get your dynasty on the Byzantine throne one way or another. Once you're there, you'll likely already have enough land to create kingdoms of Thrace, Greece, Epirus, Bulgaria, Trebizond, Anatolia, or potentially more. Getting the imperial crown is easier said than done, though. There are two possible routes you can take there. Your first option is to marry into the Komnenos dynasty to give your children a claim, and create a strong enough faction to push that claim. Historically, Constantinos rose to prominence by marrying Emperor Alexios's daughter, Theodora. At day one of the challenge, Alexios doesn't like you enough to let you marry any of his kids right away, so if you're planning to go this route, you'll need to get your chancellor to butter him up a little. After you've secured your claim through blood, you'll still need to be strong enough to push it. Having a lot of personal strength and gaining the support of the other most powerful vassals in the realm is necessary, since demanding the emperor step down for your dynasty is a very tall order. The Angelos dynasty has a pretty rough time of expansion at first. Many of their neighboring lands are held by the emperor, and in my experience, he was very unwilling to hand out any of these titles even when he was above his domain and duchy limits. There are some options to expand your realm, though. Constantinos is unmarried and has three brothers he can marry off for non-aggression pacts and potentially alliances. It's always best to set these up before unpausing so that the good bachelorettes don't get snapped up. 
The Byzantine vassals also tend to marry into each other a lot, so if you're depending on your allies to help you win a war, make sure they don't have a non-aggression pact or alliance with your target before you declare. Roger of Sicily is a very strong child duke with two sisters in their mid to late 20s he's willing to marry off. Michael of, Mosi Michael of, Mosia. Michael of Moisia has a 31-year-old daughter and a 43-year-old sister that are marriageable, and an alliance with him effectively doubles your military strength. His brother is John of Crete, meaning that this single marriage could get you two alliances. Roger of Apulia, he's discount Sicily with multiple unwed sisters ranging from ages 38 to 50. Theodoros of Calliopolis has a 24-year-old single sister and 1,100 troops. You'll have to decide whether you want the help he'll provide or would prefer to wait and conquer this weak count later. Since you're only a duke-level vassal at the start, really your only options for expansion are fabricating claims. Obviously, you'll need to recruit the highest diplomacy chancellor you can from the character finder for this. Thomas of Abydos, directly north of Samos. The duke starts with slightly more levies than you do, but his lands are separated across the Aegean Sea and take some time to join forces together when you declare war on him. This separation, plus a single decently strong ally, make it easy to take one of his counties. Nikephoros of Siberiat, I certainly pronounced that wrong, holds lands to the east and islands to the south of Samos, separated from your original counties by the emperor's holdings. We'll put up less of a fight than Abydos. Theodoros of Calliopolis, a single holding count north of Abydos who can barely defend himself. Low risk, low reward. Once you've got a power base and a claim on your kids and have started your faction, you can see if other vassals are interested in joining you. As you'd expect, claimant factions see more success when the claimant is more likable than the current emperor. Try to groom your children into having high diplomacy, virtuous traits that would make them a good liege, and if possible, traits that are the same as the most powerful vassals. If you have the Conclave DLC and a lot of money, you can buy favors from strong vassals and use it to strongarm them into your faction. Just make sure they aren't on the Emperor's Council or have a non-aggression pact with him, because if they are, they can't join factions at all. Watch your faction's power percentage carefully. Due to how much titles shift in the Empire, you want to make sure you fire your faction once you get over 100% strength, before somebody dies and you lose a part of your power base. The Emperor may step down peacefully to avoid civil war when you declare, but never count on it. When the war itself happens, I don't recommend trying to capture Constantinople. The Theodosian walls make it take forever to fall, and give the Emperor far too much time to consolidate his armies together. Take all his other lands and beat up his troops whenever possible instead. The second option is to be elected Emperor. This is the approach I took in my game. By becoming prestigious and popular enough and avoiding mutilation, you can swing the Imperial electors in your favor and get Constantinos or a member of his family elected Byzantine Emperor legitimately. Competing with the Emperor's relatives and children who are born in the purple can be pretty tough, but being a respected member of the military, having high diplomacy, and sabotaging the other candidates by getting them excommunicated can help. And if you somehow get the Emperor himself to vote for you, you're golden. If you have Conclave, and all else fails, check to see if electors with high voting power will be willing to buy a favor from you, which you can then call in as succession support to force them to vote for the same candidate as you for the next couple decades. Holding the Byzantine Empire together is a whole other beast, but really, once you have the Imperial Throne, you don't even need to hold it for any particular length of time, though it certainly helps with lovely rule. As soon as you're the Emperor, create four kingdoms as fast as possible. Hold them all yourself, or hand them out to members of your dynasty to complete moving up, then simply keep your game going long enough to achieve 15,000 score for lovely rule. I hope this guide helped. Let me know what crazy shenanigans the Byzantines got up to in your games in the comments below, and I'll see you on the next journey.